you know, we understand the absolute importance of combat because it is the most tactile and interfaced thing that you do as a player in the game, right? It, we're doing some really cutting edge stuff. Like we're kind of at the bleeding edge of what technology allows for. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why, you know, stuff keeps changing so fast. We're kind of learning as we go because we are pushing boundaries really, really far. So it's pretty exciting. To find a few. I'm gonna summon a hundred now. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I don't know if we can actually. <laughs> They're aggroing. Run, flee. Okay, wait. Let me summon a few more. Summon a few. Oh my! Wait, they're loading in. They're loading in. Oh no! I summoned a thousand. A I summoned a thousand. Ah! Oh, I, I can't even get out of here. So you're seeing, uh, you know, there's a thousand bears that my computer's rendering right now at 4K. Uh, my frames are dropping a little bit, but uh, <laughs> on the server, they're all still acting and reacting. Oh my gosh. And I'm dead. All right, guys, it's Shalon. Today was the Intrepid Studios official live stream for Ashes of Creation. Usually what I do is chop out all of the important stuff. Today's live stream was so good. I feel it's only right if I let Intrepid do the talking. So what I've done is I've chopped down their live stream to about 10 minutes. There's timestamps so you can jump around the different topics. I'm going to join you at the back of the video for the Q&A section. You know, um, I know that in the past... Uh, you know, I said I was going to be considering opening up Alpha One Sales again once if we hit a certain uh, level of achievement that I was waiting for. It is looking very good that that's going to be the case here over the next month. Um, we're going to evaluate internally, uh, but with the, the testing that was done over the past couple of weeks, I am very, very uh, happy to see uh, where, where we've gotten to overcome those February obstacles. Um, and we'll be considering opening Alpha One Sales again. And, and Essentially, uh, you know, we talk about what this experience for Alpha One is going to be, that month-long experience. It is not intended to be a content experience. You know, I just want to make sure we have preface this for anybody who's considering, right, if when we do open up Alpha One again, um, participating, you know, you essentially are a tester. You're you're like a QA tester. <laughs> you're, you're jumping in here. You're giving us the data that we need. You're providing us with uh, warm bodies to kind of run through and give us a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a look at our, our technical underside, making sure that, <clears throat> you know, we're hitting the beats we need to hit. It is not intended to be a game experience. It is not intended to be a, you know, fully fledged content ex experience. So keep that in mind. You know, you are, you're really, the alpha testers we have now are putting up with a lot, and we are super appreciative of them. I mean, as a studio, as a project, as a game, you guys as a community should be really appreciative of the work that they're doing too, because it is instrumental in in us being able to fine-tune what needs to be fine-tuned and finding the issues earlier rather than later. Uh, that's a very important piece of the puzzle. So um, just keep that in mind, a, a fair uh, consumer warning. <laughs> yeah, just to uh, touch on this a little bit, um, you know, those of you who didn't see the announcement uh, for the changes in the dates, uh, you know, this this was something that was definitely possible. Obviously, we can't predict the unknowns that uh, come out of our testing, and the testing is very important. It does provide us that data, and, and our Alpha 1 testers have done a tremendous, amazing job in kind of, um, you know, putting up with all of the uh, the um, uh, you know the bug tests and uh, the spot tests that they've had to kind of endure, uh, but we did see some significant improvements that uh, even you know our testers are very happy about um, with regards to stability. And uh, we did solve some issues that we found in February, um, and now are moving back and, and forward again. So um, <clears throat> you know it, there's always a potential, a possibility when you're in active development that timelines are going to change. We try to you know make that commitment that we only give you dates when we're very very, very, very confident, 100% confident that they're going to happen. But obviously, at the end of the day, things come up. Um, we want, we're trying to make the best possible game, and that's going to take time to address. Um, and that's what we're here to do. We have continued our hiring. 
and we are continuing to hire. So the more you guys help us get that word out, the better. Thank you guys for that. Uh, you've been doing a great job on social media, you know, tagging dev people you know and pointing them to Intrepid Studios. Uh, we need to, you know, grow considerably more, and we'll probably be announcing a next hiring phase, I would say, around the start of summer. Um, may even have some type of uh, job fair that's virtual and physical when we get back to, into the new studio. Very excited for that as well. We might be accelerating that timeline. Um, originally, it was planned for July 1st, but it might be happening a little bit sooner. Um, so I won't get too technical on, you know, what happened in February, but essentially, um, you know, the the means of this testing is to determine kind of uh, uh, both the foundational networking structure that's present in the game to facilitate high concurrencies that we want on uh, individual world shards, as well as in kind of dense locale uh, areas within the map. Um, <clears throat> we did experience some, some issues that were uh, deep in code that had to kind of get routed out and fixed uh, and um, we were able to do so obviously with the help of our alpha one testers you know have have con finished a considerable amount of testing around problems that we saw as i said earlier in february um, we've addressed those and we have fixes in place for them that have been now tested with the uh, alpha one testers and feel very confident on that front um, <clears throat> development is is moving forward we have a lot of automation testing that's being coupled with our our um, nda testers and um, we are running a lot of spot testing right now we are actually moving from unreal engine version 4.25 to 4.26 um, i believe that was completed today and then the rest of the studio is going to sync up starting next week um, so that's a big uh, a big update to the uh, to the project those of you who follow kind of on reddit or see uh, you know tweets about this um, uh, I accidentally fat fingered um, spawning some NPCs that we test with, right, to kind of test server stability and performance. Uh, and instead of spawning 500 bears at, at once for um, all the testers to fight, I spawned 5,000 bears. Uh, these are fully um, uh, operational NPCs. They have behavior trees. They have AI blackboards. You know, they are they are functioning as an NPC would. And to my surprise, to everyone's surprise, actually, uh, the server handled it quite well. 5,000 entities all within a very dense area. Um, yeah, um, combat's a big push for us right now. Um, what will actually be shown in Alpha 1 is a little bit in flux. We're trying to, um, we basically have gotten a brand new tool um, that allows us to author um, abilities both faster and then also have those abilities um, act uh, more responsibly than the, the system that we're using right now. So the, the connection between your character and what your character is doing is going to feel a lot better once we make this conversion, um, especially when it comes to all the abilities. Then on, on top of that, we've got a whole separate branch of combat prototype things that we're trying. Um, and we're going to be play testing those internally to see how they feel and kind of get a sense of what we want to bring over to the live game. So there's a bunch of like weird stuff, cool stuff, awesome stuff that we're all just trying out, throwing on the wall to see if it works. Um, and for the things that do work and that the, the people who are play testing it give like, hey, this is really fun. I really like this. We'll incorporate that into what's going on with the live game. And then that'll kind of kind of make it live and sort of as that feedback rolls through, that's going to be kind of gauge like the rate at which we get it into the test. Um, so not entirely sure exactly how much of that um, will make it in. It's possible that everybody hates everything we've done and then none of it goes through. So um, it, it just depends on kind of where we're at um, and kind of the feedback that we get. So that's kind of where we're at on the combat side. Um, and there have been people asking questions in regards to the content that you're talking about. Will there be dungeons and raids and things of that sort for them to test in alpha as well? I mean, there'll be some, right? Uh, don't, don't, it's not going to be a full, you know, world experience. We have, I think, uh, something on the order of like uh, six or seven dungeons. Um, one of them is is what I would call like semi raid level. Um, you could probably roll through uh, with less than that, um, just given the tuning on it. We've got one world boss that is going to be raid level, so it's a true true forty person raid boss, um, and and it's probably going to be pretty challenging to defeat. Um, I'm not sure if it will be defeated during this uh, alpha, uh, but we'll see. Um, there's a couple of world bosses which are kind of party level. Um, uh, so there, there will be, there will be a dungeon experience. There will be, um, kind of a raid ish experience, but all that stuff takes a lot of time to really yeah. tune out and, and make. Um, and so we've got a handful of those things, but not like, not like a, a full world of that yet. And I think the other question that I see often in regards to alpha one is, 
about like artisan stuff and thing and like harvesting and thing things on the crafting end. Um, yeah. What kind of things they'll get to experience in Alpha One in regards to that? So that's that's super rudimentary. Um, the crafting system is a huge system. It, excuse me. It, I mean, it incorporates more than just crafting, right? It's like it's uh, economic and resource and gathering the processing systems that touch all the building components and the freehold systems and um, you know those blueprints. And then there's the crafting recipes and the crafting stations that are tied into the node system. That's a very large system. Probably 90% of that is not online in Alpha One. The core basics of what crafting represents as a gameplay loop that is represented so that means that there are gatherables out there you will have to have tools in order to ser to service those gatherables there will be processing um, that's necessary and then there's crafting stations that are available and can be constructed by the players this is an alpha one um, you have to collect the recipes you have to collect the materials and you have to refine the materials and then you have to create the reagents uh, and then use those to kind of uh, create the final crafting uh, component or that you're trying to create so that in and of itself is present um, but it is a very, very small piece of really what will be the larger crafting puzzle for Alpha 2 and Betas. Yeah, so nodes during Alpha 1 will be capable of advancing to Stage 3. That's the village stage. That's when the government systems come online. It's when the uh, building capabilities are now available and people can purchase homes and there's some societies and all the quest hooks are available through the different stages. Um, these are actively collecting experience currently from players they're going to represent the right culture when they do propagate. Um, you know, all those systems are, are available. And I think there's, I don't know, between like 12 and 14 maybe nodes in, or maybe we cut that down to nine. I don't, I'm not sure, but there's right around, there are nine. Okay, there's nine nodes that are going to be available across across the Alpha One um, experience. Um, and each of them are going to be, you know, relevant for the different POIs that are placed across the world. Uh, there's a there's a, a basic vassal system that's in place for those node systems. Um, that's kind of the experience behind Alpha One. All right, guys, I'm gonna go over some of the Q&A with you. I'm gonna put a couple of questions on the screen to really focus on them. There's a couple of uh, updates from Steven after the show, and then I'm going to play a little bit of footage. I'm going to talk about the rest of the Q&A over that. So the first one is, how do you balance action camera mode and make it as viable as tab when it won't have those additional available options to the user during combat? And the answer is you don't. Uh, you simply can't take an action combat mode camera as make it as viable as a tab co uh, camera. So there's a couple of things. It's a one button push between the modes. And there is a press and hold that allows you to switch modes temporarily, do whatever you need to do, and then you switch back. The next important one was if you have stuff in storage at an apartment and the mayor decides to destroy the apartment, what happens to your stuff? So they gave an answer that your stuff would be mailed back to you. Of course, some people said, well, isn't this going to be exploitable so that you can move a lot of goods around the world? And then, as always, when there's confusion after a live stream, Stephen gave us an update. None of the caravan transportable materials would be mailed. Those would drop into some sort of local storage inside the node. The rest would get mailed to you. I know that uh, Talents has been asking this question for a couple of months. Do you know roughly how powerful you are planning to make legendary unique equipment? And the answer that we got was about 6 to 12% more powerful, but it's not just a matter of the stats. That legendary equipment is probably going to have some unique equip effects or other things, so that's what you're going to have to look out for. All right, and the last one I want to put on the screen, if a node happens to advance to stage 4 during the 21-day protection period granted to a node when it advances to stage 3, does the protection period stay in place? Or is this prevented altogether through some sort of XP gain lockout until a mayor is elected? Interestingly enough, this is actually a new piece of information. You'll see Steven's update. You get a node siege immunity for 21 days after each stage up so that all of the new buildings and services can come online. So the mayor has a chance to build out those mayor plots so that it's not, oh, this node hit four, let's siege them now before they really become a four. 
We didn't know the lockout period extended past stage three. So this is actually a really good question. It got us a really good tidbit of information that we didn't previously have. Now, for the people that are saying that this is going to be unfair, that nodes are going to be able to go from three to six without ever having to be uh, an opportunity to be sieged, the trick here is that a node might be able to make it from three to four during a 21-day period, but there's no way a node's going to go from four to five or five to six in 21 days. The planned schedule for that just exceeds a three-week period. All right, for the rest of the questions, I want to just have some of their footage up on the screen. Uh, somebody asked the question is, will NPCs stay static uh, as the node doesn't level? And the answer is really, it depends. A node doesn't determine anything on its own. It's going to be a lot of what's happening in that node, what's happening in the rest of the world. Somebody asked about soft caps or hard caps on stats. Would it be possible to hit 100% crit or 100% block? There won't be hard caps, but there will be diminishing returns. They also talked about how most stats are contested. Now, we could spend 20 minutes on this, and I probably will during one of my shows this week. But for right now, all we know is that they're going to be contested. Somebody asked, will in-depth auction data be available, such as volume, price history, etc.? There will be some data available, but some of it is only going to be made available through economic nodes, and that you're going to need to build specific progression or service buildings to get that information. So this is going to de depend if the mayor wants to really be dialing down into those facts and figures. Uh, somebody asked if you can raise the level of your gear. Can you raise a level 45 item to a level 50? The answer is no. Of course, if you like the look of that level 45 item, you can, of course, transmog it. But there is no increasing the level requirements on gear. And then on nodes and the election systems, somebody asked if the military node tournament winner becomes the mayor or can they pick someone else as mayor? They become the mayor. This is kind of the law of the horde, the strongest rules. And then somebody asked, with the divine node leadership, will those quests be solo or group? Obviously, since you're choosing the mayor, these are going to be solo, but you might be able to get help with those quests. And that is it for today. I know there was a lot of information to unpack. I know next week on my show, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Twitch, I'm going to be breaking down a lot of that uh, content from today's live stream, especially those contested stats. If you guys want to know more, check out ashes101.com. Make sure you check out the community wiki. Also, check out the Ashes post. Uh, they did the update, the transcripts like they always do. Uh, until then, guys, if you need anything, I'm on Discord. I'm Jalan, hashtag 0001. And then in the description below, there's a whole lot of ways to get in touch with me. So if you have an Ashes of Creation question, don't leave it unanswered. I will see you guys next time when I'm live on Twitch. I say, Sprocket, we've reached the end of another video. Time to thank the sponsors. Yes, that will do, that will do. Shall we pop off for a sport of tea?